Hello, and thank you for your interest in this presentation. I am Jeff Demansky, and I'm here with Glenn Weinberg from Jewel Community Power. And we are the two leads of the administration team of the Hudson Valley Community Power Partnership. Hudson Valley Community Power Partnership is a partnership of 10 communities which came together to participate in a community choice aggregation program, which launched in the middle of 2019. These communities are, in the order of the logo shown in the lower left, Phillipstown, the City of Beacon, the Village of Cold Spring, the Town of New Paltz, the Village of New Paltz, the Town of Red Hook, the Town of Clinton, the City of Poughkeepsie, the Town of Fishkill, and Marble Town. The program partners are shown in the lower right of the slides, including Jewel Community Power, that's Glenn's organization, Hudson Valley Energy, that's my organization, and together, this partnership selected the third logo in the program partner section, which is the orange logo for direct energy. And they are the supplier through the remainder of the two year program that started in the middle of 2019. So direct energy is a supplier until about the end of June of 2021. Also shown in the program partner section is the logo for central Hudson. And I'd like to include that just to emphasize that this is a program that does not replace central Hudson in terms of its delivery service. This is a program that uh, works alongside the delivery services and the billing service and the repair service that Central Hudson provides. Now, in the right of the slide, uh, there is some information if you want to learn more about the program that we're going to talk about. There's lots of good information on the partnership website, which is HudsonValleyCommunityPower.com. And underneath it, uh, some links or some uh, identifiers for the social media channels that we use to share information about the program as well. Now, this program is an end of year progress update, the end of 2020. And we're going to talk about the topics that I show on the next agenda slide. But generally, it is a focus on how we've done in terms of the multiple benefits that derive from being part of a community choice aggregation program. Finally, because this is a recorded presentation, uh, you can't ask us questions right away, but we want to make sure that you have contact information so you can contact us and ask us questions that you might have about the content of the presentation or other thoughts or questions you might have on your mind. So I've put now in the middle of the slides my email and our program helpline number and Glenn's email and his phone number so you can contact either one of us. And again, there's lots of good information if you want to go to the program partnership website. Jumping to the agenda, these are the topics that we're going to cover today. We're going to start out uh, in the program highlights and overview section uh, with a overview of the basics of the program. And Glenn, I'm going to hand it over to Glenn to do that. That will also include highlights of the program, um, some overview topics and some roll up now information about how we're doing with the program. And we'll also talk about who we are in that section as well and, and included in the basic information. So there's a an updated understanding of what the program team is, you know, who it's comprised of and what we do. Then we'll talk about the partner communities and provide information about who uh, Jewel is working with. Uh, broadly within the state and also a focus on the Hudson Valley programs. And then we'll dig in to the third topic on the agenda, the program performance. That'll be a deeper dive into, into metrics and details about how the program is doing and some projection forward. We'll talk about what it looks like in the upcoming marketplace for, for these programs. Included in these topics uh, so far that I've, that I've talked about, we will also, in, in addition to talking about how we've done on the program, share some updated information about what is available and how this program has evolved for some new opportunities to be mindful of. And we're very much gonna talk about the idea that this program can be repeated, as many of you know. Um, we're coming to the, uh, the last quarter of a two-year program, and so we're going to talk about what is on the horizon for next steps and not so far distant horizon too. So there's lots of good updated information to be mindful of, including uh, a review of the fourth topic, community solar. 
where there are some very exciting developments that will be a focus of our of our conversation tonight of what we present. Then we're going to leave off on talking about the next steps. Uh, one slide and we'll revisit contact information too, so you know how to get in touch with us. But the next steps will identify those specific opportunities and, and required steps for moving forward with a new version of the program and integrating uh, more fully into the program for the value proposition about how there is opportunities to expand what this program can be for your communities. So now I'm going to hand it over to Glenn to start talking about this uh, more basic information so that we're all on the same page as we move forward into some more detailed information. Glenn? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, so I'm, I'm Glenn Weinberg. I'm with Jewel Community Power. Um, we're the program administrator for the, the Hudson Valley Community Power Program. And as Jeff mentioned, uh, this is a, a program that rests on the, the regulatory authority uh, known as community choice aggregation. Uh, this is a state policy which allows uh, municipalities in New York State, cities, towns, and villages uh, to source their own default energy. Uh, to, to choose sources um, and to identify terms uh, and priorities that they have for their, their energy mix, um, including price uh, and, and renewable content as well uh, for both electricity, natural gas, and the new, uh, the new component of this authority, uh, which we will talk in, in greater depth later on about, uh, is the ability to integrate community solar uh, and other community distributed generation projects uh, into the default offering. So um, for the, the first contract, which Jeff mentioned is, is coming up at the end of June, uh, we focused on 100% on New York State renewal electricity. And we identified sources in New York uh, to serve our, the customers down here in the Hudson Valley going forward, we'll be able to uh, be even uh, more local um, and, and more focused in terms of the way that we source our clean energy sources and partner with local de project developers um, here in the Hudson Valley uh, that are uh, in development of community solar projects, which have additional benefits, including guaranteed savings for customers. Um, so the program really is now comprised of two central components, one electricity supply and the other community solar. Uh, on the electricity supply side, as you know, it's, this is an opt out program, meaning that all eligible customers are enrolled unless they choose not to participate, unless they opt out. Uh, opting out is always free and without any penalty whatsoever. It is, it is absolutely each customer's choice whether to participate in the program or not. Um, it is a 100% New York State renewable electricity supply. Uh, so it replaces the central Hudson uh, grid mix, which is primarily nuclear and fossil based with a 100% renewable default electricity supply for all residents. Um, and it is a fixed rate. It is a low fixed rate that stays the same in every month. So even if there are peaks in the market, prices for electricity, often in the summer or in the winter due to weather-related demand uh, spikes, uh, the CCA rate remains fixed uh, in every month of the 24-month contract. Community solar, now many of you have already uh, engaged with community solar with us and know uh, uh, of community solar because of projects being built in the area and, and other providers um, soliciting uh, customers and looking for sites and, and maybe even coming to your boards, trying to get permits, et cetera. Uh, to date, we have offered this, this opportunity to Hudson Valley Community Power customers on an opt-in or voluntary, voluntary basis. Um, looking forward, uh, our expectation is that we're going to be able to offer this on an opt-out basis. So just as we do with electricity supply, um, the community solar, can be included in, in part and parcel of the default offering to customers. Uh, again, it supports local development of clean energy, and it's a guaranteed savings of up to 10% off, off your annual electricity bill. Uh, so it's a really powerful tool. Um, and in combination with the 100% uh, renewable supply, 
it offers the best of both worlds. These 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 uh, components, these programs, they are not um, they are additive to one another. They they do not compete with one another. One does not replace the other, and customers can take advantage of both and see the benefits of both additively. Uh, in addition, um, as a reward for the community's participation in the community solar projects. There is additional funding available, which we have created uh, a sustainability funds. And we'll talk more about the details of these funds later on. Uh, but for each community that has participated with us, uh, uh, they've had the opportunity to access um, funding um, to and identify a sustainability project or initiative of their choice. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about about the results of that those campaigns later on. Uh, so in terms of uh, highlights of the program to date, um, we serve about twenty five thousand households, and we've deferred uh, a remarkable two hundred thousand tons of greenhouse gas emissions simply through participation in the CCA and the conversion of the default electricity supply from a fossil based uh, supply to a renewable supply, um, we have made a tremendous impact uh, environmentally here in the Hudson Valley. Uh, the program has come at about a $5.50 additional cost per household per month, um, largely due to the economic downturn and the market downturn um, uh, due to COVID uh, and other factors. Uh, but we expect looking forward as we move into the second contract uh, and market rates remain low, we expect to be able to fix the electricity rate for the next two years at a very competitive rate uh, and even come at, at a savings against what cent the central Hudson rate will be for the coming two years, even with the 100% renewable um, supply. Uh, and we have had consistent engagement, more than 7,000 um, interactions with your residents, both phone and email and all sorts of, of meetings um, that we and, and Jeff and his team have done over the course of the two years. Um, we remain, it remains a living, breathing program uh, and customers still are coming to us, asking questions, looking for information, uh, looking to better understand their electricity supply and their bill. And Jeff will talk more a little later about new opportunities that 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 he and his team have developed um, to educate customers about how to better understand uh, uh, their bill especially uh, and and where their electricity comes from uh, we've had really great participation in the community solar program to date we've supported nine uh, um, community solar projects here in the hudson valley and we will continue to support even more as we move forward into an opt-out construct so again the two things to focus on throughout this presentation, action items for you as the community. Um, we are coming up uh, in about five months now on the expiration of the first contract and the, re the first renewal. Uh, so that process starts now. We'll ask you to, to invite us to present um, and ultimately to approve a resolution to go forward with the next contract. And we'll talk more about the outlook for that, as well as uh, the the precise steps involved. Uh, and again, the really exciting evolution here is that um, the, the program has grown in terms of the impact it can have on the community. So beyond the, the sourcing of 100% renewable supply from sources around New York State, mostly hydro and some wind, we now have the additional opportunity to integrate directly into that default offering the uh, the, a community solar subscription for every participating resident, which comes with guaranteed savings. So with that, I'll, yeah, go for it, Jeff, uh, to talk more about the um, the program updates. Yeah, so I'm going to dive in a little bit further on the electricity supply portion of what you highlighted. And this slide looks very similar to the last slide, but uh, just the same format, but uh, some repeat of information, but a little deeper dive just to focus on the electricity supply side of the CCA program. And here on this slide, the three sections are talking about the environmental benefits of the electricity supply portion of CCA, and then about the program rates benefit, the economics of it, and then very importantly, the, the customer protection um, aspect of the program, which are there are numerous. 
But the highlights here, the updates again, Glenn talked about for the environmental benefits that we are serving um, about 25,000 households here in the Hudson Valley with 100% renewable electricity. And he mentioned the 200,000 metric tons of avoided greenhouse gas emissions. Put another way, this is the equivalent of removing 41,000 cars from Hudson Valley highways uh, and roads. I'll dig in a little deeper on some upcoming slides uh, with charts about uh, the benefit, the environmental benefit on a community by community basis. On the program rates uh, updates, this again, as Glenn emphasized, it, these are competitive with non-renewable utility rates. That's the idea of the program. That's the win-win the scenario that we seek. And our rates have remained competitive. Um, and certainly, as shown in the second bullet, as we highlight here, these rates are definitely less than what individual customers could obtain for a, a comparable 100% renewable supply rate. And I'll show this on a on a graph coming up too, a comparison of rates, including how we've done showing you the rate comparison to the variable rate that Central Hudson has charged over the life of our program. All this, of course, is built on a on a platform of consumer protection, protecting your community members from a lot of vagaries that have happened in the energy supply marketplace. Our program, in essence, is structured to be a simple, relatively simple opportunity for people to take advantage of what's happening in the energy marketplace. In that it is a fixed supply rate for the duration of the program that does not turn variable. It is a fixed period program. You know, we've talked about that there's a two-year contract that we've been working on, and that is intent to make sure that people are not stuck in endless contracts. The individuals are not in a contract. As the community leaders know, this is a contract that exists at their level. So every member of the community has no contract, no restrictions on participation. So though it is an opt, this has been an opt out program, they can opt out at any time with no fees, um, no restrictions whatsoever. There is team support for this. And this is of course what I love about the program and that is my team that is there for the ongoing education available every day in multiple ways. And we'll highlight that going on. But that is so essential just to make sure that there are multiple pieces of the program and we wanna make sure that we're providing a way for people to feel comfortable or an easy access point so that they can understand what's going on and to not participate if they don't want to. And we'll talk about participation rates coming up. So here's a bit of a deeper dive into the environmental performance of the program. Uh, what I show on this chart are the avoided emissions from the residential and commercial electricity use uh, from the commercial and residential sectors uh, in metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions that are stemming from the members of each community. And I'm showing the first six communities that started our program in the middle of 2019. So the members of each community that were in the 100% renewable supply rate through the community choice aggregation um, to the electricity supply portion of the CCA program. The data for this chart was derived from a few sources, um, and I show those sources in the, in the footnote down there, um, which we combined to produce the information that we wanted to look at to do a, as, as much as possible an apples to apples comparison. So just focusing on the residential and commercial electricity consumption, and the greenhouse gas emissions data, and we use 2010 data from a 2012 report that the state um, produced for each community um, with the data that we had from consumption uh, through our CCA program, and we used an EPA site for conversions. And it shows the significance. The green bar, for example, of, of the green portion of the bar for Beacon shows that of a total of about 20, if you add those numbers together, it's more than 26,000 uh, metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions. Of that 26, approximately uh, 1,000 tons, 12,505 metric tons were avoided by community members in Beacon being part of the CCA program. So the, the brownish part of the bar at the top shows what we is remaining from electricity emissions for the residential and commercial sectors. So the brown bars in all these charts show more work to be done or more opportunity for avoided emissions, while the green bars show the significance of the benefit that's been there. So for Beacon, almost 50%. Um, Cold Spring, you know, really significant relative portion. And again, multiple data sources come together. So maybe it's a little optimistic in what it presents in terms of the relative percentage of benefit for, for example, Cold Spring in Marbletown and Phillipstown. But these are very, you know, ballpark, but still good representations of the impact of the program in terms of 
moving us moving us on a community by community basis towards addressing the broader state goals of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So now looking at the community solar highlights, um, what have we done for community solar? And Glenn mentioned, and I show on this map on the right, the nine solar fields, <laughs> including those two red dots that are up in Westerlo, which are off this uh, this portion of the of the map. But the red dots are the central Hudson Territory uh, community solar projects, and the orange dot is the one in Orange and Rockland Territory. And we'll talk about how we're working with Orange and Rockland communities, uh, including those shown in orange in the bottom of the map. But these are the ones that were catalyzed that we helped significantly contribute by encouraging enrollment by community members uh, that, are, that are part of our partner communities to be part of the program. And through this, uh, we've raised funds through the Jewel Sustainability and COVID Relief Funds, basically a, 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 a portioning of the, of the funds that they have from the program to sustainability purposes within the communities. Um, and so uh, with the 843 enrollments, $42,000 were raised for sustainability funds. And I'll talk about in detail towards the end of the presentation, how each community, uh, how much they raise and how they're using those funds for those that have identified uses and over $5,000 for COVID relief uh, campaign efforts now, going to um, organizations on the front lines of supporting families in need during the COVID, the COVID pandemic impacts. So looking forward a little bit, um, but giving you, I, I hope, some very important context to consider here uh, on in terms of environmental benefits. Very important to know that community choice aggregation is part of, and community solar, um, particularly the opt-out community solar that Glenn talked about. So both the electricity supply and community and opt-out community solar are two very powerful parts of an updated New York State program. The program is called the Clean Energy Communities Program, and many of you have heard about it. It's been around since about 2016. It launched in, in the state. And in a nutshell, uh, there were 10 high impact actions that were identified in that original launch of the program. And if any community did four of those 10 actions, they accessed grants to use for other energy projects. Wonderfully, and particularly here in the Hudson Valley, those grants were used pretty quickly by very aggressive communities. So it was really wonderful. NYSERDA recharged the program, reshaped the program to move forward, what they're calling a leadership round. And they just announced this program on the 26th of January, the new version of the program. CCA and Community Solar remain the highest impact actions in that list of actions that could be done. And they get you more than halfway there, you know, as CCA communities that have done these strategies. And if you do opt out community solar, you get more than half the points you need to access the first level of grants, you know, tens of thousands of dollars um, to be used for energy projects. Um, so this is a nice CERTA program and I've included down below the link for the program website. So that is an overview of the, the performance to date, but also a look forward. I'm going to pass it back to Glenn to just revisit again, just to make sure everyone understands who the administration team is. And uh, Glenn, I want you to take it away. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, Jewel Community Power, we're the program administrator. And really our job is to, uh, really our, our combined job, both, both Jewel and Hudson Valley Energy, is to manage the process from A to Z, uh, to take what can be a fairly complex uh, and labor intensive uh, process um, to interface with all sorts of different stakeholders, uh, manage the regulatory process, um, manage the data acquisition and the data security process with, with Central Hudson, um, and manage the procurement process with suppliers, including um, encouraging participation from the suppliers, uh, promoting competition, making sure we're getting the best deal, making sure we're getting the most protective Customer, uh, customer protective contract, uh, and then enforcing that contract to make sure the suppliers are living up to it. Um, all of that um, so that the municipality, so that you don't have to. Um, this is ultimately a municipal program. New York State has set it up such that you, you as the municipal officials um, and the municipal decision makers have the, the ultimate um, uh, decision and the authority and the 
responsibility for the program, but the program administrator is a position that has been created by New York State, which essentially um, uh, carves out a role for a consultant like us, like Jewel Community Power and like Hudson Valley Energy, to act as a representative or as an agent of the municipality throughout the process. Uh, and again, our job is to is to take this work off of your plate uh, and and to manage all of these uh, moving parts. And the one big piece of that, which I haven't yet covered, but and really speaks to the partnership uh, between Jewel and Hudson Valley Energy is the job of educating uh, and informing your community. So uh, all of the outreach activities, uh, all of the events, the promotions, the informational um, materials that we've distributed, the social media posts, uh, all of that uh, is an ongoing effort, not just when we launch the program or when we're getting ready to renew like we are this year, but uh, all the time. Um, uh, throughout the year uh, and throughout the duration of the, the contract, it's our job to uh, be out in the community, to be a consistent presence, um, uh, to be answering all of the customer questions, um, and to be a trusted source of energy education and information uh, and a durable one. Uh, and that's really where, where Jeff and his team come in. Uh, uh, Hudson Valley Energy is that local arm. Uh, they are the boots on the ground. They manage, Jeff and his team manages a, a hotline, a call center that operates Monday through Friday, all business out, normal business hours. And you can often get them on the weekend too. Not that I'm advocating you call Jeff at home on the weekend, but um, they are uh, a tirelessly um, you know, um, present and working to respond to all of the questions that they receive, which are in the thousands um, by phone and by email and all other means. Um, and that's their job is to, is to make sure people are well-informed about what's going on. And, uh, and, and they, and, and Jeff, I should mention Jeff, uh, it's, he's not just a, uh, um, you know, a, a voice on the other end of the phone. Jeff is an, an energy expert and a sustainability expert. Uh, and has been in various formed, various uh, uh, facets of sustainability here in the Hudson Valley um, for decades. Um, so when you call uh, the program hotline, uh, you're getting a real expert on the other end of the phone. Um, and that's something we really pride ourselves on, that, that this program, um, you know, that there's a lot of complexities and there's a lot to understand about how electricity markets work and how your electricity bill works. Um, and the most important thing that we can do for the community um, is to be accurate, factual, and knowledgeable um, when, when they come to us with questions. So that's really the, 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 uh, the sort of the administration partnership and how it breaks down in terms of our roles. Um, we can move on here. So uh, next we'll, we'll zoom out a little bit and we'll talk about kind of CCA in New York and also uh, the communities, you know, the, the, the update on the communities here in the Hudson Valley. Uh, so first, um, CCA, I've been working on CCA um, in New York State uh, since really before there was CCA in New York State. Um, and the, the pilot program um, was a group of 20 communities in Westchester County. Uh, that program launched in May of 2016. It has since grown from 20 to 28 communities and continues to grow and, and evolve and, and introduce new and new value adds for, custo for customers. And really that was the, I worked on that program for about 18 months and I was the program director um, when we launched. And really that program was the sort of sandbox um, uh, upon which the rest of the, uh, or, or CCA in New York State has, has evolved out of. So when you see that kind of ant farm effect downstate here in Westchester, Westchester and then up it into the Hudson Valley where our program is, this is really the home of, of CCA in New York and, and not just CCA in New York, but clean energy focused CCA programs. They're really the flagship programs for New York State, both Westchester Power and Hudson Valley Community Power um, have set the precedent for the rest of the state 
uh, to, to demonstrate how CCA can be a, a powerful tool for accessing low cost clean energy uh, for communities. And since then it's spread. So uh, we were the early adopters down here, uh, but it has spread throughout the state all the way into the, the Northern Adirondacks, all the way over to Buffalo and, and on the East end of Long Island and everywhere in between. There's more than 130 communities to date that have passed the CCA local law. Uh, so it's a growing movement around the state. Uh, in terms of who we're working with at Jewel, um, and even there's a few more to add to this slide now because we're growing all the time. We have communities uh, coming on board with us um, uh, uh, all the time, but we represent, now we represent, I believe it's, well, it's more than 30, I believe it's 31 or 32 uh, municipalities in, in the state uh, representing more than 300,000 households and small businesses. Uh, so the power and numbers of, of community choice aggregation is really growing. Um, and you, you, the 10 uh, participating communities in the Hudson Valley Community Power Program are up there on the top, but your group is growing too. Um, the village of Nelsonville, the town of Gardner, uh, and others are coming on board uh, and will join you in your renewal effort as we go out back to bid this spring. So we'll even have a bigger group and a, a more market power uh, to command leverage in the market. Um, and I should also point out an additional program here in the Hudson Valley on the other side of the river. Uh, uh, six communities in Rockland County have recently launched their program uh, as of November 2020 with us. That's that, that third row, uh, Clarkstown and Orangetown, Village of Nyack and others. Um, uh, a clean, another 100% New York State, five out of the six are, are a 100% New York State renewable default. Um, and they're just getting going on their on their two year uh, um, uh, contract and integrating community solar. So they're following in, in your footsteps. So I think we're gonna dive in now with a focus on our our uh, Hudson Valley Community Power Partner Communities Plan. And I think we, uh, you know, we're gonna dig in a little deeper dive in the upcoming slides in terms of program performance. But before we do, again, just revisiting those next steps for the contract renewal, let me have you talk about that here. Sure, yeah. So uh, again, as we move towards um, renewal, we'll go through the same process that we went through the first time. So in terms of procurement. So we want you to have us come in at your next board meeting. Um, and talk a little bit more about, about the program, about the process, and really a, a customized presentation uh, for how the program has performed in your community in terms of enrollments, environmental benefits, community solar uh, progress, et cetera. Um, we'll present to you a, a specialized uh, presentation and a short presentation. It won't be as comprehensive as, as this recording is. It'll be a 10 or 15 minute presentation. Uh, where we will review the program and talk about the process going forward. Uh, at that presentation, we will uh, talk to you about and ask you to pass a, a resolution, which is um, a confirmation of, of moving forward with the program into the next phase. Um, so it's just a board resolution. It, it's not a new local law. Uh, there's no, no new agreement to sign yet. There, there will be for successful uh, in finding you a, a, a contract that that you like, uh, but at this stage, it's just a a, a renewal resolution um, that gives us the go ahead to uh, put out for bid again uh, on your behalf. Um, we're looking to do that. Uh, we're looking to get those resolutions all wrapped up um, by the middle of March, so in the next you know month or half month and a half or so, um, and put the RFP out. Um, and award that RFP in April with giving us plenty of time to run another opt-out period. We'll send out another batch of letters if you, you know, to, to residents um, and, uh, and enroll everybody in time for, to pick up right where the first contract left off. So July 1st, 2021, the new contract will take effect with a new rate. Um, and we expect that the rate will be even lower this time. Um, for 100% renewable electricity. Um, and we will move forward again with a fixed rate uh, for another two years or maybe even longer. 
All right, cool. Thanks, Glenn. And now this is a time to press pause and take a break if you want to before we go even deeper into some detail. Uh, but that's really good information in terms of the highlights and overviews and how we're doing specifically with our program partners. But I'm going to take us a little bit deeper just to bear warning for your minds here <laughs> into our program performance, uh, some details on a community by community basis. Um, but it's also going to include some really good information that Glenn will share too as well in terms of what the forward market looks like for the energy marketplace. Um, the reason we're so excited and, and encouraging you to uh, to engage in the process of the renewal. So stepping deeper into some um, community by community stats. And one thing I should have mentioned when I was talking about the bar charts in terms of environmental performance, it uh, the data showed for the first six communities that were part of our program. And you can see the first six communities on this chart in terms of the participation. Um, Beacon and Cold Spring, Fishkill, Marbletown, Phillipstown, and the city of Poughkeepsie all started in July 2019. Um, and wonderfully, we were able to add, because of the condition of the market and the willingness of the supplier uh, at the time, four additional communities to the program, which brought us up to 10. I did not include on that bar chart uh, the town and village of New Paltz and the town of Red Hook and Clinton, but we have that data as well. And that will be part of the, the data that we present to uh, each community uh, when we get to speak to the upcoming board or council or trustee meeting. Uh, we'll have that data to share with you and certainly happy to share it with you uh, remotely by email. So looking at the participation rates that's shown in the rest of this chart. So what we show in the third column are the numbers of participants, meters, residential or commercial meters that were part of our program at the program start, you know, each of their start dates. And then in the fourth column, it's in the numbers of meters participants as of October 2020, when we when we took a snapshot of data. And then the last column shows an attrition rate, or in, a, in every case, a reduction. And this emphasizes, uh, the story shows that there was reduction in numbers of participants in every community. Uh, and it speaks to the power of the program, the ability for customers to do this, to opt out of the program at, at when they wanted to. And there was, you know, we talked about the economic performance of the data uh, of the of the program compared to the utility rates um, because we lived through unusual times. And I'm going to share that specifically on a chart on the next slide. But it's because of you know some of the challenges we had economically of the program that you know we did not um, uh, we we were not surprised to see that there was an attrition rate by customers taking advantage of the freedom that they had to opt out of the program. And so that's reflected in these numbers. So how did we look in terms of performance? Uh, this is another detailed chart, but what we're showing here are four different rates for different opportunities for utility customers here in the Hudson Valley. Uh, starting at the top, you know, these are rates in cents per kilowatt hour, and this shows the time period from the launch of our program with the six original communities in July 2019 all the way through the latest published rates for the for Central Hudson in January 2021. And the red line, the straight red line at the top, uh, shows the average of rates which customers could obtain as individual customers, individual customers entering into a contract with an energy service company or an ESCO. So that's what individual customers shopping, taking advantage of the open marketplace. That's pretty much the, the the rate that they could expect, you know, and it shows that it's the highest number up there. That's at seven and a half cents per kilowatt hour. The yellow line, the, the, the higher line of those two that are close together is our program's 100% renewable fixed rate. So that's at 6.36 cents per kilowatt hour. So that is our fixed rate for the duration of the program. While the blue line you know, is the second option, the standard rate, which was the non-default option in all of our communities. Um, that mirrors the mix of sources that Central Hudson typically provides on its monthly basis. Now, the green line is Central Hudson's monthly variable rate, you know, what the published rate was for each month. And it, uh, it you know, it's hills and valleys and ups and downs. And you could see that when the program started in July 2019, our program rates were just slightly higher than Central Hudson's rates. And then in the second month of the program, as happens with um, with seasonal variation, we expected rates to go up in the, the hot summer months and the and the cold winter months when electricity consumption goes up. The program rate did indeed go above our rates, 
But then there was a dip that happened in the fall of 2019, which reflected, um, you know, as Glenn will, will talk about as well, that there was um, an unexpectedly mild winter preceding this um, and an excess of, of gas in the marketplace, which um, unexpectedly dripped those, dipped those rates down below our program rates. But after that two month dip, there was an increase. Reflecting again, the seasonal variation of, of increases in the coldest winter months that brought the program uh, rates right into competition with the variable rates from central Hudson. And then uh, right up, you know, in the spring of 2020, up until April, when they, the utility rate went above our rates and the marketplace had, had, had anticipations, as Glenn will talk about uh, on the next slide, you know, that there would be <laughs> relative normalcy and our program uh, would have done well against the utility rates. But then something called the COVID pandemic happens right there in the March, April time period. And you can see that impact on the economy and on utility rates with that significant drop down in May of 2020. Um, and then, at, but after that drop, there was a return to kind of normal variation of an increase in rates in the summer. Again, high cooling period, high electric use, and then a dip in the fall, but then increasing rates um, in, the, in the winter. Without the pandemic shift, if you shifted those May 2020 through January 2021 rates up without that pandemic shock, I think we would have been doing great, um, a break even or even better um, versus Central Hudson's rates. Um, but this is the one risk of the electricity supply side of the program is that the one risk is that we might not do as well as the utility rates, but we leave off on a on a hopeful side. And I think there is generally hope and op some optimism for the economy moving forward. And it's reflected in the utility rates that right there, January 21, the rate is right between our, our program rates. Um, and so this is something we maintain and, and uh, you know, and have shared with lots of customers and, and, and municipal leaders um, so, so that we're keeping tabs and, and keeping honest account of how we're doing as a program. But it is definitely worth um, sticking around for this next slide for detail that Glenn will go into in terms of how the forwards are looking in the electricity and energy marketplace. Yes, yeah, so this is in support of, of, of uh, the story Jeff just told, taking us through the, the program sort of month to month. Um, these are the forwards, so not the price for electricity at the time that is listed on the, the, the title uh, row there but rather what you could buy um, forward looking energy for on the time frame listed on the left hand column. So um, uh, and the story that this tells us is that at the time that we awarded our bid in the spring of 2019, prices were, these are normal sort of typical prices. They look high when you look at the rest of this chart, um, but for $40 a megawatt hour, um, all the way up to $46 a megawatt hour for, for 2022 block. Um, what this tells us is that nobody saw this, this, um, this uh, market downturn coming. Um, so at the time that we went out to bid and priced that energy, everybody was looking still very bullish, so to speak, on, on the forward market for electricity for the next three years. Uh, the the oversupply of gas coupled with that mild winter that Jeff mentioned, that's when we started to see this market correction and we started to see prices go down. Um, so much so that in the in the fall and into the winter of 2020, uh, we saw some historic lows, both for natural gas and electricity rates um, here in the Hudson Valley. But as Jeff mentioned, it was coming back uh, um, pre-COVID. Uh, we had rates ascending, getting closer to, to where they had been. Um, prior to that that market dip, um, and then COVID uh, took its its course, and now we're back down to a sort of you know close to those those historic lows. But the good news of that is that we get to go out and fix rates again in that market, in this down market, and we get the benefit of these prices now. So as we price, as we 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 procure energy, looking forward. Through the rest of 21 and into 22, we get that benefit of those 30 or 33 dollar prices rather than the 40 or 46 dollar prices, and that's going to be reflected in the bids that come back. Um, so to fix a price at the low end of the market, right, it's all upside for us. Meaning that if Central Hudson's rates, if the the 
um, the pandemic turns around and the economy comes back and central Hudson's uh, energy consumption goes back up to typical levels, central Hudson's rates will follow. Uh, but we will lock in at that $30 level, not at the $40 level or the $45 level. And we will be the beneficiary of the market coming back just as we were a bit of a victim of the market um, of the market slip that we saw over the last couple of years. Awesome, thank you, Glenn. And I hope that you followed that, but we recognize that this is challenging. And so we take a step up in terms of depth, but to emphasize the point that this is what the team is here for. You know, there is a lot of complexity in the energy marketplace. Um, there's a lot of complexity even for understanding your utility bill and understanding the components of the program and how it works. And that's what we're here for, as we've said before. And here's some stats in terms of, and, 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 and information, you know, informational stats about what we're doing in terms of our customer support. You know, we are that ongoing presence uh, for, and learning opportunities in our partner communities. We mentioned before that we've had more than 7,000 interactions with customers, you know, answering questions, assisting them with uh, components of the program, facilitating conversations with Central Hudson to make sure that they are happy in the end, uh, addressing needs. We had a number of, of in-person, uh, they, were, they were regular weekly in-person office hours that we held. And that's what the snapshot on the right is from one of our flyers for the period when we launched um, through a majority of the period until the pandemic hit that we were holding regular office hours in our communities, um, advertising this so that people always knew where to find us. They could always find us in person and have a conversation and people took advantage of that. We've switched to a more virtual world and we continue to have um, virtual meetings and we hold webinars, um, live webinars and other ways to interact with people. Um, and they continue to be advertised. So if you're not on our list and want to know about those events, please contact us and, and, and we'll put you on the list to know about those meetings. Um, so this is something we're continuing to move forward on. And the topics that we talk about, you know, there we there are common questions and we find it's useful just to revisit some of the common questions. Um, and these are these are the top six that we front, and just to give you a flavor of the of the of what we address when we speak to customers, people. And there's a concern that we replace the utility company. The first question in the upper left, and we emphasize no. Um, this is all done for the electricity supply option, and and what we're transitioning to for opt out community solar, all done through the utility bill. You know, it's just changes on the bill, and so they logistically, it's a very easy lift. When people ask us about why we're doing this and how can you do this, we emphasize that this is a public benefit being delivered by their community leaders on their behalf to give them the best of what the energy marketplace has to offer in a simple package. You know, it's those three goals that we talked about, marrying together the, the potential to bring together, supporting, paying only for renewables from New York State, cost competitively. Uh, and in a way that has built many built in protections for the customer. Will the electricity supply portion of the program save me money? We're always very frank about that. And we've always shared, for example, the performance of our program with the chart that I showed a couple of slides back. It is believed, and when well, you can see when we launched, that there was the anticipation that we would provide a, a 5 to 10% savings on the supply rate that people would see, but it's not guaranteed. Um, and so we're frank about that, but it, it is very competitive though. You know, it's still, as we, if you remember that red line for the individual, it's much better than what individuals could get in the marketplace. So the, the Costco effect, the buying club effect is working for the program. The lower left, are people locked into this for the duration? And people are used to the energy marketplace having restrictions um, and being very customer unfriendly. And we emphasize, no, this is a public benefit that you can take advantage of if you want to, or you can walk away from it if you want to, and you can walk back to it if you want to. So free exit and free entry with no fees, no penalties, no, no nothing that's um, hidden from our program. The middle bottom question, we get this a lot. What happens after the contract? You know, does the rate go crazy after this two-year period? One, it's a fixed rate, and we emphasize that, and we know what this is in response to, where people have been in private contracts that have been variable. They start out fixed, and they turn variable, and they turn crazy. Part of the consumer protection is the fact that this is a fixed rate for a fixed period. And to do it beyond two years, to do it beyond the contract length, it's a repeat. It's a renewal, and that's why we're emphasizing that, that um, 
a lot of benefits are being delivered and there's really great signs for what the what these programs will deliver in the coming you know the immediate coming years and so we want to make sure there's understanding about the renewal process lastly the most common question we get is where does the energy come from and for the renewable through the, through the program you know it's renewable solar wind or hydro um, that that's the renewable options that we allow through our program but these are the high level questions but we also got a lot of deeper questions and and lots of long phone calls and long conversations and we are responsive to that and we're thinking always about how to convey information and to make people feel comfortable and to provide resources for them to understand what's happening um, and if you want to talk to us more about the energy forwards the marketplace forwards we're here for that but What's represented on this slide, a little bit of a busy slide, is are two things that are one the one we've completed and something in the works. And these are ongoing education opportunities. You know, Hudson Valley Energy, my team, we created with Central Hudson, in partnership with Central Hudson, we created a, a course, a free course for understanding your utility bill, your bill in depth. We have it uh, structured as a beautiful one hour presentation, but we also recorded it uh, and it's available for viewing at your ledger uh, in four parts uh, on our on our on our YouTube page. We are also in the lower right circle near Jules uh, logo. We are developing a multi-level course about the grid. <laughs> We're calling it the grid. I think it's a good name, but it's really about understanding the electricity grid. So understanding how renewable renewals get introduced to it, how reliable you know who who are the stakeholders involved in this. What are people paying for? How do these marketplaces work? There's a lot of questions that people have, and we love being there to answer those questions. And we wanted to create more tools for people to understand what's happening. So please be aware of these and take advantage of these. And I'll be happy to share uh, links if you contact me with the, in the recording sites for the courses. And we'll schedule uh, either live webinars or once we get back to being able to see each other in person, live presentations for uh, the members of our communities. So now we're going to take a step and focus on community solar. Um, we've talked a lot about the supply marketplace and the de detailed dive that we did. Thankfully, it's not a detailed dive on terms of stats for community solar, but some important things to understand about what it's been in terms of benefit for individuals and the communities and what it means going forward. And so what we have often done in our, in our education and outreach efforts is talk to this slide to help people understand the difference between the electricity supply portion of CCA and the solar opportunities that are parallel opportunities. And many of you have probably seen me talk to the slide at our public presentations. And I call this my menu slides. And I make the analogy that this is like a, a menu in a restaurant where you have the entrees on the right and the appetizers on the left. And you can only pick one appetizer and one entree for your meal. The same applies to these two menus here. On the electricity supply option, there are three choices that a utility customer in a CCA community can take advantage of, but only one of them. But they always have all three options available to them. None of them are taken away. Those choices are to either go with what is the state default before CCA is, uh, electricity supply is launched in a community where the utility makes the decision for them, or the second option is the private marketplace. And remember the red line on our on our chart for the rates. That's the red line option, the third party supplier option. Or if you are a CCA community, uh, electricity supply option community, you have that as your new default option, which you can reject and take advantage of the other two. There is a lot of confusion about solar and how it interacts with the electricity supply options. Solar is a parallel choice, and you can mix and match the choices from these two menus together in any pattern that you want. But we encourage folks to take advantage of choice three and choice C on these menus, combining these electricity supply of community choice aggregation with community solar. But just to clarify on the solar side, a customer need do nothing about solar. They don't have to do a solar installation. They don't have to subscribe to community solar. They can just leave as is. Or, as many people have done, they could choose to install a solar system on their home or business. If they have not done that, they can subscribe to community solar and take advantage of the programs that we're doing. And this applies 
to what we've been doing in terms of opt in, where we've encouraged people to opt in to community solar. But with the good changes that are taking place here in central Hudson territory, the opt out choice is becoming available. But what it's looked like within the communities in terms of the opt in, it's been fun. It's been really great to partner with the communities who recognize that combining the two uh, bottom menu choice options, the supply option through the CCA program and community solar just brings additional kind of no brainer benefits to their community members. We've had a lot of fun working with community leaders and doing outreach, and that's the special sauce of this program. And so shown on this slide is some of the materials that we developed with um, Supervisor Oberly in the town of Clinton, who was the last community to join our, our partnership here in the Hudson Valley Community Power uh, Partnership. And this is part of the flyer and the quote that was included with him was on another section of the flyer. And this was a, you know, a, a package sent out to everyone when the program launched and a follow up afterwards too, to make sure people understood what the opportunities were, how they differed, and what they needed to do. So Glenn talked about before too, uh, and we mentioned, and I spoke to the the sustainability funds and the COVID relief funds that Jewel uh, decided wonderfully was an important part of the program, a way to give back to the communities, to bring benefit to the communities. And so what's shown on this slide is for the 10 communities, uh, the different programs that were uh, designated, identified by the communities in, in partnership with Jewel for the use of those funds. So for each of our communities, we show the number of community members that enrolled, opted in to community solar, and the resulting, you know, from the $50 per enrollment, um, the, the amount of money that Jewel uh, gave to the communities for these purposes. And for a number of the communities, it was a really fun process for them to decide how to use the funds. For example, uh, a number of the communities had designated uh, projects in mind. Um, some couldn't decide among the good project opportunities that were kicking around in terms of supporting sustainability. Uh, for example, in the city of Beacon, there was a, a vote. You know, they put it out to the citizens over a, about a one month period to vote on four different project options. And uh, there was a clear winner in that the citizens, um, you know, quite a few voted and decided that the funds should go to the Beacon City School District to support sustainability efforts in the Beacon City School District. And so that's where the more than $10,000 um, dedicated um, to, to the Beacon, uh, Beacon from Jewel is going. And you can see the other amounts raised. Uh, Town of Marble Town, for example, uh, for its dedication to a, a, a walk and bike project. But Marble Town also shifted gears um, when the pandemic came and uh, decided to divert those funds to a COVID relief um, to the Rondout Valley Food pa Pantry. So 2100 raised for that. Uh, New Paltz uh, similarly did a COVID campaign, uh, raised more than $3,000 to give to the family of New Paltz to help families in need. And then the village um, raised 2300 and they're still determining what to do with the program. Town of Phillipstown uh, raised 7,600 for, and they're going to use it for their refrigerant management program. Um, and the, but these funds are held in reserve for those communities that have not yet determined how to how to spend those dollars. Uh, but it'll be a fun process uh, helping them or just watching what they decide to spend the money on. And then it's also a beautiful opportunity for celebration. You know, the community engagement and celebration. So here's a snapshot of a, a big check event with Mike Gordon from Jewel uh, presenting the check to the, um, the family of New Paltz um, organization. And then there's a picture from New Paltz where we're given the funds for both the uh, COVID relief and for the walk and bike uh, project that they were doing. Here's a snapshot of the Beacon High School in the upper part of this image. And then there's a, an image of a trail that's gonna be uh, probably one of the resultant benefit beneficiaries of the Marble Town project. And here's showing um, rooftop air units, um, air conditioning units, um, which is part of the refrigerant management program that Phillipstown is, is uh, designed, a great program. And if anybody wants to know more about these programs, um, we, we have some good information on them, but we're glad to connect you to the other communities. That's another beautiful element of our program is serving as a connector between the communities for good knowledge sharing. Now I'm gonna pass it back to Glenn to take this conversation about uh, community solar uh, forward for what's coming uh, and what's you know what they've been working on and what the new opportunities are so Glenn yeah thanks Jeff so the the you can see the the impact that communities integrating community solar into your CCA program can have on communities 
uh, both the residents uh, and also the the community at large through the sustainability funding. Uh, so when you integrate though um, on an opt out basis, your community solar in with your electricity supply, the impact scales uh, by an order of magnitude. So while maybe a um, you know, 5% of a community um, or 10% of a community may sign up um, voluntarily through com for community solar through the opt-in model. Um, you might get 90% uh, or 80% of the community signed up to community solar through opt-out. And that really is the power, speaks to the power of, of CCA broadly, uh, and also just the, the collective community action through the leadership of the community. So, um, this is the same authority. It's 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 leveraging the same um, authority that is uh, that you authorized yourself with through your local law, through your CCA local law that you passed several years ago. There, as I mentioned earlier, there is no need for additional legislation. You already have the authority to do it. Um, the only reason it hasn't been available um, until now um, has been largely. Uh, regulatory and market um, barriers that have prevented the, the viable implementation of community solar on an opt-out basis. Um, so what are those? So um, previously you've had to, uh, and you can move to the, the next slide, uh, Jeff. They, previously, if you signed up for community solar, um, you had to sign a contract. Um, and this is a barrier, not the contracts are typically fairly, um, you know, standard, um, and there's not a whole lot of poison pills in there for customers. It's a guaranteed savings, but, uh, it is a contract and that is burdensome, um, for most people, uh, to, to feel like they are signing a document that they may not understand, um, with potential risks, risks in there that, that they don't fully um, they haven't fully, uh, you know, internalized. Uh, with an opt-out model through CCA, there is no individual contract. Just with an electricity supply, uh, the municipality authorizes the enrollment of their community members through a master contract. But there is no uh, any undue legal burden that trickles down to the consumer. The consumer enjoys the benefits without having to take any. Uh, active steps or, or sign any contract. Um, there's no second bill. So to date, Community Solar has operated in the sense uh, where you the utility, Central Hudson, places credits on your bill, um, which are in the value of the solar power produced in your name associated with your subscription. Uh, so you get a, a big credit on your Central Hudson bill. Uh, and then the solar farm sends you a second invoice, which you then pay directly to the solar farm. Um, and when you cobble those two bills together, you can see you've saved some money, but it is a it is a, a, a gap. In, in other words, it, it does place the, the um, impetus on the customer to then put those two bills together and understand that they've saved money. Um, so it works uh, and it does mean a reduction in the overall energy spend, um, but it, do, it does take some additional um, focus and attention of the customer. The idea here is to keep it all very simple. So with the introduction of what's called utility consolidated billing, which was introduced in National Grid uh, in the fall of 2020 and will be introduced in the other utility service territories, including Central Hudson, in the coming months here in 2021, uh, all of that, both the charges and the credits will be netted out right there on the same utility bill. So the customer pays one bill, they see precisely how much they've saved. It's a line item on the bill. It's a negative number. So it stands out amongst the other charges and fees as a discount. And they can see in plain dollars and cents how much they've saved every month. Um, in addition, they're not paying any of any anything to the solar farm. It's Central Hudson. It's the utility that then owes the solar farm the value of that power, which they've essentially purchased on the customer's behalf. And perhaps most importantly, there is no credit barrier. There's no credit check. There's no uh, FICO score minimum uh, or any of the other 
um, uh, barriers that have have previously excluded some low and moderate income residents from being able to enjoy the benefits of community solar. So while it's a guaranteed savings program, uh, a lot of the, the the most in need of those of, of that electricity bill relief have been precluded from participating, um, which is really, of course, counterintuitive and, and antithetical to what New York State is trying to do. Um, with CCA, CCA provides that consumer protection layer and provides equitable and universal access for all eligible customers in the community to participate uh, and get that guaranteed savings without the legal risk and without the, 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 um, the responsibility of paying a separate bill. So we are launching this um, for communities in upstate New York. Now we're in the process of launching our first program with opt out community solar within a CCA. Um, we are piloting this in national grid territory because as I mentioned, national grid is the first utility in New York state to offer consolidated utility billing for community solar. But we expect this to be available in all other parts of the state within a couple months. And we will be going back to the regulators and asking for permission to, uh, to expand this model beyond national grid territory uh, across the state for all of our CCA municipalities, including, of course, the Hudson Valley Community Power Program. So how do you, how do you integrate, how do you make opt-out community solar a part of your existing CCA? Um, you pass a resolution, it's a simple resolution. Again, there's no new law. Um, there is no additional um, uh, approval steps that we'll ask you to take other than that same resolution we'll ask you to pass a renewal. So it'll be a renewal resolution um, that will also include your intent to um, participate in community solar. Marbletown was the first community um, uh, outside of national grid territory to pass one of these resolutions of intent. They passed it on the 19th of January. Um, so they've taken that step, um, but that is open. That same uh, opportunity is open to all members of the Hudson Valley Community Power equal, uh, Program equally. Um, and we'll be coming, as I said, as you have us come in to talk to you more about this and answer your questions directly at, at your next board meeting, we'll be able to walk through precisely the, the composition and content of that resolution. Um, and it is, an, again, a non-binding resolution in the sense that it, it authorizes uh, Jewel to explore the opportunity on your behalf, but you still have the ultimate decision-making power. Um, so in terms of process, it's essentially a parallel procurement process. It'll work very much the same, uh, but we'll issue a separate RFP. We'll issue an, an RFP for electricity supply and in parallel, an RFP for community solar. Uh, of course, there's two different uh, groups of respondents, um, ESCOs on one side and community solar developers on the other, but, but it'll look very much the same. Uh, we will manage that bidding process. We will collect the bids. We will analyze and evaluate the bids and then come back to you with a recommendation. Um, and if you like the proposals uh, that we receive and you want to move forward at that point, you will authorize um, the award of that RFP, and then we'll move forward to contract. So it's just like electricity supply, just for a different, a different product or a different offering. Um, and again, really important, unlike, so regulatory restrictions um, have prevented CCAs in New York from including heap participants in the electricity supply programs, very unfortunately. Um, in the sense that some of the regulatory protections uh, for low-income customers also exclude them from, from programs like CCA. Uh, not the case for community solar. So community solar, all eligible customers, including HEAP customers, can, can, will be enrolled unless they opt out. The only groups of customers that, will, that are ineligible by definition are those that have solar on their roof or are already part of another community solar project. So you can only have, as Jeff said, you can only have one solar deal um, with Central Hudson essentially, 
but uh, those that have an ESCO for electricity supply, which would otherwise be um, ineligible for the electricity supply portion of CCA, are eligible for community solar, um, as are, as I mentioned, HEAP participants as well. So now, uh, to just wrap up, just some the next steps. Just it's really a review of what Glenn's already talked about, but um, these are the, the two next steps. So, you know, please do invite us to present at the next board meeting. Um, there's good topics that we want to discuss with you, and including some of the details on a on a per community basis, and then passing the renewal resolution or resolutions that Glenn had just described. So please take away that these are the steps to to prioritize, and and we look forward to digging in more with you uh, to move things forward. And then finally, just to put our information back up so you can ask us questions uh, as this is a recording here again, um, uh, identified with my, my team, uh, my helpline team is our CCA at Hudson Valley Energy.org email. The program hotline is at the top and Glenn's information is at the bottom. Uh, so thank you so much for paying attention to this presentation. Glenn, any closing thoughts before we say goodbye? No, just and thanks for listening and please do reach out to us. Um, we will be reaching out to you as well, uh, but uh, please do reach out to us and, and, and get us on your next agenda because we are now in full swing and in renewal mode and we, we want to move uh, fairly swiftly through the process so that we make sure we have plenty of time um, to get everything we need to get done. So thanks again and, and look forward to, um, to continuing the conversation with each of you. Wonderful. Thanks, Glenn, and thank you all.